you know, football changes so quickly. You can go on a, a run of six games, score six goals, someone could be watching and they take a punt on you and you never know what can happen. So I would just say to people, just keep going really and keep working hard because like you say, you never know who's watching. Ollie, great to see you. Uh, England international, Premier League footballer, Aston Villa's top scorer. It's a brilliant tale, but let's start at the beginning. When did you first have a ball at your feet? When did you first think, I'm not bad at football? God, I can't, I can't remember what age I was. Maybe about eight years old. I always used to play football and stuff like that, but I never used to play at a local team. Um, and my, um, my friend come over and he was going to football training in that evening. I just went with him and it kind of went from there. Uh, and in terms of the academy and getting into to Exeter, how did that develop? What, what age were you? So I went under nines and I just used to, I used to play local football with like my mates and stuff like that and used to enjoy it. And then as soon as I went to the centre of excellence and it was just too like structured for me and I couldn't concentrate. I was just, they wanted to stop and start it and tell you to do this. And you're nine years old at the time, you just want to play football. So. Um, they told me I wasn't ready and I, cause I couldn't concentrate. Like you'd be talking to me and I'd be looking over there. Like, um, so they told me to come back in six weeks and I kind of ignored that. I went away for about pff, near enough 18 months. Um, and then that's when I rejoined the center of excellence, yeah, the academy. And what was that journey like from, from then to signing at 16? Um, a lot of football, really. I used to play on the Saturday for my local team and then I used to play on the Sunday for um, like Exeter, the academy. So just football all the time, really. Um, yeah. At what point did you think, I can make a living out of this? No, like you don't really think about like the money side of it. And I just thought, oh, I just want to play football. Um, so. Yeah, it's all I ever knew really. So doing my scholarship for two years and then I like, progressed. Um, it's not until you get into the first team really and you start to get paid and you see like fans and you're around the older players and you start learning about, you know, mortgages and how important it is. You know, if you lose a game, it's really important. People have got, you know, feed their families and stuff like that. That's when it comes into it. But when I was younger, I, just, I didn't think of anything about that. I just thought about playing football. So you grew up in Devon, which is an area some of our viewers might not know yeah. uh, in the United Kingdom. Would it be fair to say it's not a hotbed of football compared to some of the bigger cities in the yeah, UK? Yeah, nothing like obviously London, complete opposite um, sort of lifestyle. Everything's really slow and yeah, not many, not many people come up from, from that sort of area. Not that it's rough or anything like that. It's just not as much opportunity to, you know, excel and in um in sport down there so um yeah luckily i've i've done well to get where, where i am today and um yeah it's a complete different um it's a completely different way of life down there at what point did you think i can get into exeter's first team and then are you even thinking about progressing or was that just the first target at that age in, in your local club um no you know when you start getting given opportunities where I was on the bench and then I'd, I'd come on, maybe make an impact. Um, yeah, little things like that. You know, when I started to then, well, when I made my debut, uh, I thought I had an opportunity and it just kind of went from there, really. I didn't think too much. I just tried to, you know, I wanted to be playing and um, I just kept pushing on. EFL trophy against Coventry. I think was your yeah. very first senior goal. I mean, what, what was that feeling like from the 11 year old in the academy to scoring in a first team game? Yeah, I was speaking to my auntie about it the other day. It's the first, because the first game I actually went to was um, at the Rico. And because um, a lot of my family are from Coventry. So oh, right. that was the first game I watched. Um, and then to go and score my first wow. goal there was, yeah, really special. Shame was we, we lost the game, but um, my interview after was so funny. I'm, you know, I'm so happy we, uh, I've scored my first goal. I think we've lost the three or four one, um, but I'm just over the moon. I've scored. Uh, you wouldn't think it from the interview. You'd think that we had won. Um, but yeah, it's, it was a special moment for me. Yeah. And then after that, you went on loan uh, to the sixth 
Tia to a Western supermare. Yeah. Was that something you embraced at the time? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I didn't really see it as kind of, oh, you're getting shipped out on loan, they don't really care about you. Uh, I thought it was the opposite, really. I thought like the manager could see potential in me, but I wasn't quite ready and he wanted me to go and just play some games rather than sit in the stands and not, not learn anything. So um, going out to Western helped me. You know, my development, physicality um, was definitely a key factor in that. You know, men's football was the first time I, I played men's football properly. Um, yeah, and it really helped me develop. What was that experience like overall? What did you learn, do you think, to go back to Exeter? Um, I think just playing consecutively, week in, week out, you know, losing, the winning. Pressure to win, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, that was the main thing, really, pressure to win. You know, when I first went to Western at round, may have been around Christmas time, you know, they were in a relegation battle, so it was about just trying to, you know, win, really. Um, and that was quite exciting. Now, what a lot of people don't realise is when you were playing for Western Supermare, there was a Warsaw manager called Dean Smith, <laughs> who I'm led to believe saw you play for the first time for Western Supermare. Yeah, I don't know which game it was or something like that, but he, he told me he first saw me at, at Western. Um, and then he kept track of me, really. Then when I was at Exeter, he, he, you know, he bid it for me quite a few times when uh, he was at Brentford. And now we're here now. So, um, yeah, it's been quite a journey for, for both of us. How are you? How are you? How are you? Finally. That's a real message to young players out there, isn't it? The, the old adage of you never know who's watching. I mean, that's a remarkable story. If you to be playing in the sixth tier yeah. and your manager now in the Premier League saw you playing there. Yeah, I think, you know, football changes so quickly. Um, even though so much has happened in, you know, these last five years for me, um, it seems like so long ago. And I think just, you know, you can go on a, a run of six games, score six goals, someone could be watching and they take a punt on you and you never know what can happen. So, um, yeah, it's, football changes so quickly. And um, I would just say to people, just keep going, really, and keep working hard, because, like you say, you never know who's watching. There's a lesson there, isn't there? Because you say you embraced it. Some people might have said, well, what am I doing in this sixth tier? Yeah. And if their attitude isn't right, they're shipped back to their club and nobody sees them like Dean Smith saw you, mm -hmm. and, and they go the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you just got to kind of keep that, kind of keep focused and, and level-headed, you know. I'm not going to lie to you, there was times where I thought, oh, what, what is this? I remember playing at Wheelstone away and it was like, no disrespect to them, the facilities weren't great. And I was like, what is this? Like, hmm. But, you, you know, you just get on with it and you keep going and now I get to go to some of the best stadiums in the world and, you know. Does that um, make you appreciate it more now when yeah. you turn up at Anfield or Trafford or Villa Park, you know? Oh yeah, definitely, you know. There's not one day I don't, you know, appreciate it. I never, I'm never comfortable. Um, you know, coming from the lower leagues, it's made me appreciate it a lot more because I'm used to probably the lowest standard changing rooms and the facilities around, so you just deal with what, what's in front of you. So now that I've got everything on the plate, for me, I just, I just use it to, uh, the best I can and and, and try and help uh, make it improve me, yeah. So you go back to Exeter, um, unfortunately you lose a, a playoff final, you've developed as a player and then Dean Smith finally gets his man yeah. at Brentford, how did that all come about? Uh, I kind of knew really if I, if I wasn't, if, if we didn't get, if I didn't get promoted with Exeter that I would, I would leave. Um, you know, everything happens for a reason. It's a shame that they that I can help Exeter get into League One because that would be good for the club. But personal note, you know, it meant that I was moving on to to better things. Um, so yeah, it felt like a long time coming, but um, I f felt like I was ready to take that next step. And how was it? Because you move into the capital of England, you move into the Championship, but you move to a manager who's got great belief with you. Yeah, completely different way of life, like I said. Um, moving from being at home with my mum, uh, just to, you know, 
a week later being in my own apartment in London. Um, yeah, completely crazy really, but um, yeah, it's life, these things happen and um, I, was, I was really excited to, you know, to do that. Um, definitely made me grow up and, and I had good people around me um, and a good manager that believed in me as well, so um, I had everything I needed. Football-wise, into the championship, how did you find that? You know, a lot of a lot of players have come from League Two and the lower leagues and and played in the championship. I was playing with better players, so um, it helped me develop, and I quickly got a grasp of you know the league. Um, the tempo is quicker, players more athletic, but I felt like that that suited my game. So um, I feel like I took it in my stride, really. And in terms of Brentford, you you lost unfortunately a playoff final with them yeah, without any supporters. Um, were you delighted for them when you watched the opening game of this weekend against Arsenal? Yeah. Well, I know you're an Arsenal fan, so perhaps you weren't <laughs> that delighted. But no, but th there's um, there's a lot of good people at Brentford. You know, behind the scenes, it's just there's so many yeah good people, and I think they deserve it um, from where the club was and when I first went there. Everyone used to think it, like Brentford was such a small team and uh, yeah, we'd walk all over them. They're so bigger teams, but um, yeah, they, they deserve it really. There's a lot of nice people, a lot of hard work goes in behind the scenes and um, yeah, I couldn't, be, I couldn't be happier for them really. So hopefully they, they continue to do well this year and, um, and yeah, establish themselves as a, a, a Premier League team. Yeah. Did you have a similar scenario with Brentford in that playoff final as you did with Exeter then? Knowing that perhaps if you didn't go up with Brentford, but you'd still potentially move on? Did you know that at the time or? Uh, yeah, I thought so as well. I thought, you know, I've done well this year. Um, I had interest previous years, but I didn't feel like I was quite ready um, and neither did the club. But I felt like, you know, um, as I was getting old, as I'm getting older, you know, you can't turn down opportunities like that to play in a league higher and especially when big clubs show interest in you, you, you know, it'd be it would be silly to turn that down. So as as much as I knew that Brentford would be in the Premier League, um, in some stage, I didn't know if it would be this year or the year after, I couldn't take that risk and turn down Premier League football. So um yeah, but obviously I'm here and I and I love it here, so um yeah, I'm grateful for that. Can you remember the, the first moment you found out Villa were interested? Obviously the size of the club, but the manager was, was a key to that, I guess, as well. Yeah, uh, I knew they were interested for, for quite a while. Um, I knew the, the manager was a fan of me, but you know, regarding this scenario, um, come the end of the season, I didn't know what, what league they were gonna be in. Um, so I just waited till the off season, really. Um, and kind of let my agent deal with all that. I what about a holiday to Mykonos when you bumped into a few people? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was sat down uh, outside a restaurant and I had Guinea say to me, oh, come to Villa, come to Villa. And then um, another time, Matt Target, like I was in a restaurant and he put his arm around me, he said, we need you, we need you. So um, yeah, that was nice. Uh, obviously it makes you feel wanted and stuff, little things like that, but you know, it's not as easy as, oh yeah, I'll come, just because you said, um, a lot had to go on behind the scenes. So yeah, it was kind of waiting game, but when it, when it did happen, it happened very quickly. And um, yeah, it was uh, a big moment for me and my family. And what about that moment when you actually arrived here, saw Villa Park, walked yeah. out at Villa Park? Because an awful lot of people say to me, they don't appreciate the size of this club from the outside until they get the inside. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I knew Villa was a big club, but everyone I spoke to, they would say to me, like, you're joining a massive club, like, you don't realise how big it is. Um, and that was, you know, players that have played at a good level and, um, you know, respected in the game. So um, I was just really excited when I took my family to, to Villa Park and I uh, took them all around the training ground. Um, yeah, I still watch the video back now. I've got like really? a private video that the, the media team did for me. And I've got like my mum, she's, she's running around on the pitch, um, like with her shoes off. She wanted to feel Premier League grass. I've got my older brother pretending to put one uh, in the top corner and he's running off celebrating. Um, and my grandparents as well. 
uh, that was really special for them for them to see. So yeah, it's it is um, a big thing, but um, yeah, it was a nice moment. And I guess this season you're looking forward to running out of Villa Park when it's full because you haven't had the experience of that yet. Either. Yeah, the last time I think I played at Villa Park with a full stadium was when I was at Brentford and the atmosphere was unbelievable. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the home from, fans. Yeah, the home fans time. cheer me on. Yeah, rather than giving me abuse. I didn't think I was actually going to get called up at the time and then Sharon, the secretary, messaged me saying, Ollie, can you call me? And I thought I was getting fined. She said, no, actually, better news, you've been called up to the England squad. I couldn't believe it, really. I was just sat there on my sofa thinking, wow, well, next week I'm going to be called up to the England squad. with six pieces of KFC, two regular chips, two coleslaws, and two mesh and gravies for just one twenty nine ninety. Exe, we will DSTV preparation by popular demand. Expect nothing but this season. Get top togo zile. Arasana Bagapeni will look to dominate the 18 area when they face the defending champions, Kabu Yelu. Scores! Beautifully worked! to experience all the DSTV Premiership action live on Supersport, only on DSTV. But way too much pace. Don't miss a moment of the action. Enjoy it all with DSTV Premium. Championship history. But way too much pace. The straight ball and it's getting into the lead. Come on! It's the Belgian Grand Prix for Lewis Hamilton. The Monday and Liverpool lead it next to the time. Absolutely. and coaching staff on their feet to applaud. Get DSTV to enjoy all the action on Supersport. The Premier League, this is where it ends. Heartbreak for Alan Shearer. They've not known this level of pain for 20 years. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Some people uh, say to me, well, a fee's a fee, that's, you know, that's for them to sort out I'm club record, but it doesn't bother me. Did, did, it, did you have that sort of attitude that if someone wants to pay that, then I'll embrace it? And Yeah, um, obviously I didn't want the fee to be too high because then ultimately it does put a lot of pressure on you. Um, that's, how I, that's how I personally felt. Um, but the market is the market and you, you can't control that. So if someone wants to pay a certain amount for you, then you've got to accept it. But, um, you know, I thought deep down, I didn't want to be um, in the papers called a flop or anything like that. I just wanted to work hard and, and, and prove to the manager as well that, um, you know, the fee you're paying for me, I'm going to justify it. And I felt like I did that last year. You finished top scorer. So you, you reflect on a, a pleasing first season at Villa. Yeah, um, and I still think I could, you know, I could have pushed on maybe to the the 20 mark, I think. Um, I was unlucky with the, the VAR decisions and, um, you know, if that was this year, the goals would have mm -hmm. stand, would have stood. So, um, you know, I felt like I was unlucky. I could have been a little bit more clinical, but then again, it was a big step up for me. So, um, 
I'm really happy with, with how it went. Obviously, I got my first my first call up to the national team off um, good form for club. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how it went. Yeah, we'll come to that amazing story in a moment. But yeah. you announced yourself to Premier League fans in the most dramatic fashion on that day against Liverpool with the yeah. perfect hat trick. I mean, that, that is the stuff of dreams. Really? Did you sort of walk in the house that night and go, I've got the match ball, I've just done that against Liverpool? Yeah, I think that week after I was like in, in shock because I, I didn't expect it really. I went into the game just thinking, oh, just just work hard, you know, try and give Van Dijk uh, not a sniff really. That's that's the thing I think itself, it, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> let, alone, let alone scoring three. So when I scored in the first couple of minutes, my first one, I was... You know, it gave me a lot of confidence and then they kept going and um, yeah, it was all round, it was an unbelievable team performance as well. Um, but yeah, to score three goals was just, yeah, unbelievable. What did that do for the rest of the season? Did you sort of go home and go, yeah, I do belong here. I, I, you know, I, I can score goals against the best at this level. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think I realised... I don't know, it's when you look at the top players, when you're not in the Premier League, you, you, it's kind of like you look at them as if they're not, um, the hu they're not human and they don't make mistakes and stuff like that. But when you play against them, you, you just realise they're, um, they're at the top of their game, but they still make mistakes. So, um, I don't know, I just, I just kind of took it as it came, and I didn't really, no, I didn't really expect to score three, to be honest. The manager then, you, you touched on him, just, just how important has he been in, in your career and indeed your continual development, Ali? Yeah, I think the gaffer knows how I am as a person and he can see if I'm overthinking things or uh, he can see me when I'm feeling really confident. Um, so he knows how to, how to deal with me and um, oh, yeah, I think that's, that, that's key for a player really. Um, if your manager knows you know, how you think, then... Um, he knows what to say and, and what not to say. And as you say, it got better and better because after the Premier League goals came the international call-up. Tell us about the WhatsApp message and, and how that England call-up was relayed to you. Oh yeah, so um, you get like a, a generic message sent round. Um, but I didn't think I was actually going to get called up at the time. And then uh, Sharon, the um, secretary, messaged me saying, Ollie, can you call me? And I thought that I was getting, um, I was, thought I was getting fined because of some COVID reasons. Um, so I rang her up and said, oh, have I been fined? She said, no, actually better news, you've been called up to the England squad. So uh, yeah, I was like, I couldn't believe it really. I was just sat there on, the, on my sofa thinking, wow, well, next week I'm gonna be called up to the England squad. So that feeling then, when you came on and, and scored that goal against San Marino. Yeah try and put that into words as somebody who at nine years age wasn't concentrating in the extra academy to, yeah. to score for your national team um yeah i don't think you can you know scoring a goal is always a, a, a magical feeling it's not even my best goal but the best moment for me was 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 definitely that you know as soon as it went in the back of the net so many things go through your through your mind and um yeah, I'd love to relive that moment. And when you watch what happened in the summer with the team and the squad getting to the, to the final, does that make you more determined, more excited really about what's ahead for English football? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, it, it shows that, um, you know, English players are, you know, up there with the very best and I think definitely more respected now. Um, and yeah, it definitely makes me more hungry than ever. You know, I, I'm determined to try and be involved in the in the squad. Um, and, you know, I can only do that by performing well for my club. So first of all, I'm just focusing on, you know, my club form, trying to help the team do as best as possible and score as many goals. That's what I'm here for. And then um, see, where, see where that takes me. And in terms of the club form this season, the obvious thing is you've lost your captain. I think there was an inevitability about that. But with the players that you have come in, uh, the rest of the squad have responded in the, in the right way? 
Yeah, um, we've made some great signings and, you know, we've strengthened uh, our squad in, in a lot of areas. So um, as, as much as Jack going is, you know, disappointing, um, it's, it's helped us as well. So um, hopefully, you know, we can, we can do better than last year and, and finish even higher and progress progress up the league. You enjoyed your year with him though, special talent. Yeah, very good. Uh, definitely the best player I've played with and you know, I'm not surprised that he's been bought by the, the best uh, team in the world right now. And your first home game, both yourselves and Newcastle, looking to bounce back after opening day defeats, that's beautifully poised, isn't it? Yeah, you know, not a, we haven't had the start like we, we had last year, but you know, it's only the first game, so... Um, a win on Saturday would, you know, would, would get the season on a roll and um, hopefully just go upwards from there. And we touched on the fans and you've experienced it from an away player's point of view, but how important to all the players is a full Villa Park? We've seen it on the opening weekend. We touched on Brentford and, and other grounds where they've just been crucial to the players. Yeah, I played, at the, I played in the Chelsea game in the last game of the season. I think that was 10,000 fans but it felt like 30,000. So um, I can't wait to see what it's going to be like when it's a, a full house. And I, I definitely feel like it gives you that momentum to you know, push on and, and it gives you that extra bit of energy. And just finally, I mean, it's a remarkable journey that we've been talking about. You've got another season now in the Premier League. There's so much to be excited about for you, for your club. Yeah. And as you say, hopefully after that, your country as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just taking each step as it comes. Um, hopefully I can get back and uh, score some goals and, and help the team and, and then do as well as, as possible this year. You know, I think we're, we're looking to aim for Europe. Um, I don't think that's, that's um, a million miles away. So hopefully we can push there and, and then see where we are come the end of the season. Well, Ollie, your journey is an inspiration to many. You're a role model to many. So thank you. good luck with the rest of it and thanks for sharing it. Cheers, thank you.